While we're all in isolation together, I thought I would teach you how to maintain your brows until your next appointment. I'm Jodie, I've been an esthetician for around 20 years and now I teach new students how to become estheticians themselves. <laughs> Isn't my facial? So we're gonna start off by tinting our brows. This is reflector cell and you might find it either under eyebrow tinting or under hair tinting but you want to get these little tubes here okay i've got two colors today i've got a, a light brown and a natural brown i like my eyebrows quite dark so i'm going to go for the natural brown if this is something you are new to choose the light brown you should be able to purchase this with your tint I'm gonna put my product in a little bowl. I'm going to measure around the same length as my pinky fingernail. So you don't need a lot of product. A little bit goes a long, long way. So once you've got your tint in the bowl, you're going to pop your oxidant in. If we only need two or three drops. Give it a bit of a shake. Then add one, two, three drops. Now get your Q-tip and just give it a bit of a stir. Now I had cleaned my eyebrows prior to starting this video. Um, if you've got makeup on, what I recommend you do is just remove it with some micellar water or some cleanser. Just make sure there's no oily residue on your skin. So I've just whipped that product up together with my Q-tip. Okay, then I'm gonna put a little bit on the end of the Q-tip and I'm going to start applying it to my eyebrow, okay? And I'm just going to follow my natural shape. Don't worry if your eyebrows are a little bit unruly at this point. We put the colour on first just to give us a guide as to where we're going to shape our eyebrows. So just follow the natural hairline. Don't um, try and create a new shape with your tint. Just follow what you've already got. So you can see I'm just brushing it through my brows. If your hand is unsteady or you're really nervous about this, you can outline your brows with some Vaseline um, petroleum jelly. So once you've applied one side, then you're going to go ahead and apply to the other side. I've been in isolation for a couple of weeks now, so mine haven't been done for a wee while. Um, I'm really looking forward to having some colour on my brows. Now if you do this correctly, it should last a couple of weeks. This saves you having to use a brow pencil or a brow gel. Now if you accidentally go outside the line of your brows, just use the other end of the Q-tip just to tidy that up as you go. Otherwise it will stain the skin. If you stain your skin, don't worry about it. Once you wash the tint off um, and cleanse your face later on that evening, the, the stain from the skin will be gone. It's not gonna be a permanent stain. Okay, so you can see there already that the color is starting to take. It does take very quickly. If you've got really light sort of blonde brows, I'd recommend only leaving it on a few minutes. The longer you leave it on, the more depth of color you're gonna get. So I would normally leave mine on for a good five minutes. Also, the longer you leave it on, the longer it is going to last. So if you've got really dark hair and you've got dark eyebrows, it's actually safe to leave on up to 10 minutes. Okay, so it looks pretty dark right now, right? Don't worry about it. Once I remove the tint, the color will tone down a little bit. The other thing I think it's important for you to know is that your brows will be darker today than they will be tomorrow. So if you remove the tint and they're super dark, don't freak out. When you wake up tomorrow, they'll be more of a natural color. Again, I like my brows quite dark, even though I'm blonde. Um, my eyebrows and my face can take the colour. If you're not sure, you're better to err on the side of caution and go lighter first. 
Uh, you can retint them tomorrow if they're still too light for you. Um, the tint is a vegetable based tint. It's not going to cause any problems for you to retint tomorrow. So while you've got the time in isolation, just take time to build up that color until you're comfortable with how dark they are. Remember to keep note of the timing so that next time, um, you know, if you've built up that color over um, two applications, but it was five minutes, it means next time just leave it on for five minutes. So once um, you've left the tint on for the required amount of time, we're just going to remove it with a damp cotton pad. Always start removing the side that you applied the tint on first. That gives the other side equal amount of tinting time. So this is super easy. I'm just gonna wipe over my brow to remove the residue. If you are concerned that um, your brow is a little bit dark and you know it's going to be a little bit lighter tomorrow but it's still a little bit dark, you can use a little bit of micellar water just on your cotton pad and just rub through a little further to reduce some of that colour. Don't take too much of it off because like I explained, tomorrow they're going to look more natural. So we have our brows tinted. Now we're going to tidy them. I'm not going to teach you how to shape because I'm going to leave that to your esthetician. Um, she won't be happy with me if you all suddenly turn up in four weeks time with these really misshapen brows. What I want you to do is just keep them tidy through this time. What I teach my students is to encourage a nice brow shape is to make sure you measure the brows. So I'm going to demonstrate how to measure your eyebrows. Using a um, makeup applicator, a q-tip or an eyebrow pencil, uh, you're going to hold it up against the side of your nose and straight up past your eyebrows. Using a eyebrow pencil or lip liner, you're just going to make a little mark right on the side of that applicator there. Then you're going to switch sides and do it on the other side. When it comes time to tweezing, you're only going to remove the hair that's in between those two lines. If you take this applicator out too far, you're gonna to remove too much hair and the gap between your brows is going to be way too far. Once you've done that, use your applicator again at the side of the nose and right up past the corner of the eye to the edge of the brow. Now, as you get older, your brows actually, the growth slows down. So my growth has slowed down a little bit. So what you'll see is my brows don't actually quite come down that far. So I don't need to worry about removing any hair from the end here. If your brow did come down past this line, you would just take out anything past that line. Now this last step is the important step. The nice arch of your brow. Now, depending on your age, um, depends on how severe you want that arch. Um, I'm a little bit older, so I like mine to look a little more natural. Whereas my younger students like a really defined um, arch there. So what we do, again, we use our applicator, side of the nose. You want to bring that up and sit it just on the side of the iris there, okay? And you can make your little marking there. That's gonna be the highest point of your brow. So if you want to create that really defined look, you're gonna work up towards that point and then down towards the outer edge there. So now we've got our brows measured, we're going to 
just use our tweezers to remove any excess hair. Now, before you start, I'd like you to clean your tweezers. These often just hang around in our makeup purses and um, they're now going up to touch our face. So before you start, get out um, an antiseptic wipe or um, some alcohol spray. If you don't have any of those, just run them under the tap. Use some soap to soak those up and dry them thoroughly. So once you've cleaned your tweezers, okay, we're gonna start just clearing that mono brow there. Um, it's really important to support the skin and stretch the skin, okay? Because we don't wanna damage the skin while we're shaping our brows. Secondly, I want you to remove the hair in the direction of growth. So for instance, in the middle of the brows there, my brows tend to grow upwards, so I'm going to remove away from the bridge of my nose. I'm going to stretch the skin and just start removing the hair in between these lines. Um, pays to have a nice sharp set of tweezers. If you're stuck home and your tweezers are a little bit blunt, you can use a nail file just to sharpen them up a bit. Okay, so once I've cleared the excess hair from the middle, um, I'm going to go and start working on this outer corner and I'm gonna work towards that point where I want my arch to be. Again, really stretch and support your skin. My eye um, lids are hooded, so I have to offer extra support so I don't pinch the skin. And again, because the hair grows out towards the edge of the um, eye, you want to remove in that direction. Okay, what you don't want to be doing is removing in the opposite direction because it can cause ingrown hairs. And your esthetician will not be happy if you come back with ingrown hairs. Again, at this point, I encourage you not to try and change your shape. Leave that for your esthetician. I don't want you removing too much hair. It's too hard to grow your eyebrows. So we're just following that shape that she has already created for you. Okay, once I get up to my high point there, then I'm gonna start working back down towards my inner corner, okay? Often these hairs are a bit longer, a bit darker and a bit stronger. So it might take a little bit more stretching to remove these. And we're literally just taking out any strays that are sitting on the outside of that beautiful arch. Now, um, some people, particularly uh, my younger students, like to remove hair from the top. I've never done that on myself because I don't actually have hair growth up there. So unless you've got hair growth outside of that, um, that definitive brow line, don't worry about any sort of blondies sitting up there. If they're super dark and they alter your brow arch, you can just gently remove those strays. Don't try and define your shape from the top of the brows. We always define it from the bottom. While you're in isolation, if you've got sparse areas in your brows, now's a good time to grow them out. How do we grow our eyebrows? That lovely lash serum that you're using to extend your lashes, you can also use on your eyebrow hair. So I had a little accident when I was younger and I've got a little bald spot in my brow. There's a little scar there. So I only apply the lash serum to that area. If you find like me and you're getting older and the corner of your brows is getting shorter, you can just bring your serum down a little bit lower 
to start encouraging growth further down as well. Be really, really careful because where you put the serum here will grow. So you don't want to just haphazardly put that serum over the brows and then in a few weeks time, go back to your esthetician. She says, what have you done? You've got hair everywhere. So just really study your eyebrows, see where you want to grow that hair and start using your serum. Allow it to dry before you lie down because you don't want it um, dripping into other areas. I hope this was helpful. First time uh, creating a video. So let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn during isolation. Ha, 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 ha.